And there we go, we're recording. So welcome to Painting Through the Pandemic. I'm Shauna Sue. I own Crooked Door Studio in Uptown Marysville, Ohio. Uh, the studio has been closed for almost a year now. I think we're like two weeks away from it being closed a year. And I shouldn't say closed because the studio is still very much alive. It's just alive virtually. But fingers crossed, I'm still eyeballing a May date to be able to open the physical space back up. And I'm going to be able to do that because through this entire weird year that we've had, it just gets weirder by the day, right? Through the entire weirdness that is the pandemic, you guys have continued to donate money, a few dollars here, a few dollars there. I've been able to take that money and pay my rent for my studio space. And it has, I, you guys have paid enough that I've been able to pay my rent, pay the utilities, have that space there in May when we're ready to open back up and get, get together in person and play in person again. So I sincerely thank you from the bottom of my heart for helping me, for helping me save my studio because nobody ever anticipated that all of this stuff would be going on. But by your action, by donating to Crooked Door Studio, sending me whatever you can, you have helped save a small business, a small female owned business. So I appreciate you. Thank you so much for that. And I'm gonna get weepy, so I'm gonna move on. Okay, so first thing I like to do when we, before we ever start painting, I like to run through a supply list. I, if we were at the studio together, I would have everything all laid out and ready. You would just show up. But since we're all painting at our own homes, I like to walk through supplies just to make sure you have some, some kind of what I have, okay? Your stuff might be different, but I think these are essential to have. Okay, first things first, apron and or paint shirt. You wanna make sure the paint that we're using, and if you got supplies from the studio, the paint you're using is acrylic paint. It's water-based, water-soluble, but if you get it on your clothes and it dries, it, it is a bear to get out. Now we've talked about it here before. If you do get paint on your clothing, you can use Murphy's oil soap or um, isopropyl alcohol, rubbing alcohol. You can use that to get paint out, but it's just better to have an old paint shirt or an apron on so you don't even have to worry about it, okay? Also take a look around, make sure there's nothing around you no cloth around you, carpets as well, that you're super concerned about getting paint on. If you are, let's roll that rug up or let's lay down a trash bag, something to stand on. Because it's really easy when you're painting to accidentally just flick paint off the edge of your canvas and not even know it and find it later. And then you get in trouble. I get in trouble. I don't get in trouble. <laughs> My husband knows what he married. I never get in trouble. So anyway, he just, he might, uh, he might just shake his head like this. And Marie, you've seen that face, right? And then he just laughs and we move on. So anyway, take a moment, look around, make sure your space is clear, that there's nothing you're super concerned that you're going to get paint on. If you have sleeves, push those up, get them out the way. Okay canvas. I'm using a 16 by 20 stretched canvas. And when I say stretch, that means it's stretched around and stapled on the back. You can use whatever size you want. This painting, you can do it vertically, you can do it horizontally. I think the original picture, because it's not my painting, it's just something we're using for inspiration. I have a feeling by looking at that picture, you can see the weave in the canvas. I'm guessing they painted it on something this big. It looks really, I bet it's a really small painting. So we're gonna blow it up and have fun with it tonight, okay? If you're painting on a stretched canvas, have the conversation with yourself now, are you gonna paint your edges? I think it looks nice when you do, but you don't have to. But you wanna either paint them or not, don't go halfway. Don't start painting them and then stop because that just looks messy and unfinished. So either paint them or don't, entirely up to you. I like to try to remember to paint my edges because then when I'm done with it, it's done. I don't have to frame it. I don't have to do anything else with it. It's a finished piece. My painting wraps all the way around. I 
can just set it up someplace and not have to frame it to camouflage those unfinished sides. While we talk about painting edges, I'll try to remind you, it's easier to paint them as you go than it is to try to match them up later. So I'll try to remind you as we go through this. Okay, apron, paint shirt, canvas. Let's talk about what I have over here beside my, beside my canvas. Water cup, halfway full, doesn't need to be all the way full, halfway full with cool or cold water. Never warm or hot, it has to be cool or cold. And I like to use something with a little weight to it. This is an old mason jar. Um, I love to use a coffee cup, something I'm less likely to knock over, okay? There's that. I have some paper towels there to blot my brushes off on. Little stack of three or four paper towels to soak the water up. Brushes, my brushes tonight. And yours may look different, but we're looking for some version of these. Some version, right? You wanna find your biggest brush. I'm using a big fat oval wash brush. Yours might be a flat brush, yours might be an angle, but whatever your biggest brush is in your kit, this is what we're gonna to use to paint that background with. Big, lots of paint, big, broad brush strokes, okay? Some kind of a medium brush. I'm using a medium filbert. This is my filbert number 10, right? He's about a quarter of an inch wide and he's skinny this way. Again, yours might be flat, it might be angled, but something that you can do a little like smaller brush strokes. I'll probably paint the umbrella with this. I'll do those flower pots, some of the reflections down below, right? I'll use that medium brush. And then some kind of a round pointy brush, okay? So I'm using a round number five. Yours might be bigger, might be smaller, entirely up to you. The most important part of this brush though, the most important thing I should say is to make sure it comes to a nice point. You can use a brush that's bigger around, but you wanna make sure that you have a really nice point at the end, okay? While I'm not using these brushes, I'm gonna take them, put them in my water cup and leave them there. I'm gonna leave them camp there through the class. When the class is over, I will take them and clean them out under hot soapy water um, and then lay them flat to dry until they go back in my bag, okay? Something else that you might have, Q-tips. If you don't have them, there's time. We'll, we'll have a little drying break and you can go grab some. I didn't have this in the supply list, but I think these will be a lot of fun if we take a little bundle of three or four Q-tips to paint those flowers with down in those pots, okay? We'll talk about this later, but if you don't have Q-tips, you might go, go searching and find some. And if you, don't have, if you don't have any in the house, don't worry, you can use a little rolled up paper towel, something to just dot and play in those, in those flowers, okay? paint. Let's talk about our paint palette. Oh, give me just a moment. Okay, there we go. Sorry. I had something blocking my, my Zoom screen. I was like, that's no good. Okay. The most color, the most amount of a color that you're going to need tonight is white. You can even tell I have it on my plate. There it is. It's down there white. So tonight I'm using block out white, right? Titanium will do if that's what you have. Yellow, I'm using a bright yellow. Any yellow will work. Orange, this is chrome orange from Blick. Bright red. Um, any red will do unless you're going to try to make purple at some point. And we can talk about that later. Phthalo green. I love phthalo green because it's a little turquoisey. We're gonna have fun with that, uh, with that phthalo green. Phthalo blue, and I love phthalo blue because it's nice and dark. It's nice and dark and rich. Burnt umber, which is just like a lovely milk chocolate brown. And someone asked the question earlier, what if I don't have burnt umber? What if I don't have a brown? 
I would probably mix a tiny bit of blue over there in your orange in the edge of that orange because those are opposites on the color wheel, you should be able to get a brown out of that. And then Mars black. Okay, those are my colors I have. Now, if you, I wanna point out, if you've gotten paint from the studio, you've gotten paint in little, little two ounce um, condiment cups like this. So you pour out just what you need, snap that lid back on. And then as long as you keep the air out of it and keep the lid on it, these will keep for weeks or months, right? as long as you keep the lids on and keep the air out. So then you've got plenty of paint to use later. And this is, this will be nice because I know at some point I'm going to need clean white. I'm going to dirty up all that white on my plate. So I've got white just for giggles. Okay. I think, I think, Marie, how are we two minutes early? What did I miss, dude? Are we good? I can't, Marie's given me sign language and I'm, we're playing charades and I'm really no good at that. Picture at the end, is that where you were going? Ooh, ultramarine blue's fine, Kim. That'll work really well. The ultramarine blue might just be a little more transparent. It's not, it's not as heavy and as bold. So you might have to use a little more of it. Oh, Marie, bated breath. Well, hello, Ontario. Oh, thanks, Marie. You're a lifesaver. Okay, Marie pointed out what I was missing. So, and this is super important because if I was taking this class, I would want to know the steps we're going to go through to accomplish something like this. Now, remember, this is our inspiration painting, right? Mine's not going to look like this. Yours isn't going to look like this. It's going to be our own version of this. So, with that said, if you want, an orange umbrella, well then do an orange umbrella. I kind of thought it would be fun to do a black and white like sectioned umbrella. Up to you, right? If you wanna do all one color flowers, that's what you'll do. So I think what we're gonna do, the way we're gonna start this, oh my goodness, we have Ontario taking over tonight. I love this. I love that I'm catching in Ontario. That makes me happy. Okay, so the way we're gonna do this, we're gonna start by mapping out where our umbrella goes. And our umbrella is gonna go from side to side, all the way side to side, okay? Whatever color you choose for your umbrella, it's probably gonna need two coats. Oh my God, three Ontario, you guys are taking over. I love this. <laughs> okay, whatever color you choose for your umbrella, it's going to need two coats. That's okay. Resign yourself to that now. So the first thing we're going to do is map out our umbrella, get that first coat on there, and then we're going to get the sky in the background, right? We're going to paint above the umbrella and below the umbrella, identify side to side where our ground is going to go, and then we'll probably probably take a little break to dry right there and then maybe we'll put our pots in we'll go back up to our umbrella get that second coat when we put that second coat on we're going to do a little bit of shading and then we'll come down and start playing in our flowers if i'm using a square canvas you know i would be tempted if you're using a square canvas to give yourself some room on the left and right of the umbrella because I feel like, hello, Northern Virginia, because I feel like you're gonna run out of room vertically. I would probably not on a square canvas, not take your umbrella all the way side to side. That's just my thinking. Okay, so those are the steps we're gonna, we're gonna do. All right, let's do this. So first things first, let's map out where that umbrella is gonna go. So if I split my painting in half, that bottom line of the umbrella is above half, right? That gives us kind of a marker. It's above half. I don't wanna put the bottom of my umbrella halfway because that'll split my painting visually in half. And that's not what I want. So I'm gonna start, I think, with my medium brush. Feel like big my my big brush might be too much at this point. 
my medium brush and decide what color your umbrella is going to be. Mine's going to be red. I'm going to try to stick, stick true to our inspiration painting. So medium brush, I could show this because I know some of you have new brushes. You have a new brush. Anytime the first time you use a brush, I'm going to tap, tap, tap it in the bottom of the cup. Soften it up a little bit. Okay, very gently. Dry it off on my paper towel. And anytime you take paint, we're gonna go in the edge. Never the middle of the puddle, always the edge. So I'm gonna take some red here. And if I look at where the top of my umbrella should be, the middle, find the middle of your canvas and about a big fat hand width down. That's gonna be where my, the peak of my umbrella. And then I wanna find halfway on my canvas and I wanna go up from there, right? Because I said, I don't want the bottom edge of that umbrella to split my canvas in half. So I wanna go up a little bit, maybe a little further than a third, but not halfway. So I think what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna mark it. So find halfway, jump up a little, give myself a little mark here, and then another mark on the right side. So I know where I'm connecting. Okay, so I'm gonna step over here in front. The mark here. Okay. And then with my umbrella color, I'm gonna connect those, right? Did you see what I just did there? Didn't even touch the canvas, but I set my hand on the canvas. It's all about muscle memory with my brush above the canvas and got the feel for what that would be, right? So I go here to there, here to there. right, muscle memory. And from here to there. Whew. That's rough. The first part is always the hardest. Okay. Now, as we look at that umbrella, it has one, two, three, four, five sections. Let's start by putting that first section in, and then we can take this section on the left and split it in half, and the section on the right and split it in half, okay? I just said a bunch of words there, stay with me. So let's see, there's the middle of my umbrella. Right there. So this is my middle. I'm gonna come down like this and down like this. And then from here, I can split this section in half. And from here, I can split this section in half. Need everybody to breathe. Okay, don't hold your breath at this point. It'll all be okay. Looks a little rough now because it's just sketch lines. And then I'm gonna put the little, I'm gonna do some little smiles. So a smile there and a smile there and one there. And look, these red lines came down to too far. I'm okay with that. I'll hide them. I'll hide them later. Hmm. It's a little weird over there. Let's fix that. Let's see. 
I want to bring this up a little. You see how I messed up, but I didn't let it phase me, right? Yeah, that's better. These are oops lines down here, and that's okay because I know I'm going to put the background in, and I know I'm going to use a lot of white, and I know my white will cover those oops lines. So I don't worry too much about it. It's part of being an artist is making all the mistakes and then knowing how to fix your mistakes. Okay. Once you have your umbrella on there, once you have it sketched out, let's fill it in. And you're gonna fill it in with just your solid color. So I'm still just using red. And again, I know I'm gonna need another coat of paint. So to fill it in, I'm gonna start here at the top and I'm gonna follow this line. I'm gonna follow those skeleton lines I put in there. Let's just give that umbrella a nice coat. I'm not caking it on real thick. I'm just giving a nice even coat. So now as we fill our umbrella in, I'm wondering, does Ontario win tonight for furthest away? Do we have anyone else from out of country? We sometimes have friends from, oh, Bats. Hi, Bats. Hi, honey. I'm so happy you're here. That's right. You, I think you win. We sometimes have friends from Seattle. I think they might be the only ones, or uh, California, they might be the only ones that would beat you, Bats. Hello, Northern Virginia. <laughs> Take a few more minutes and just fill that umbrella in. Again, it's very uneven. Oh, Manitoba. Oh my goodness. And Manitoba, I feel like you've been here before. I'm so happy to have you back. I don't think Guatemala's here tonight. Well, hello, Montreal. Not even gonna try French. Not even gonna try. My apologies. <laughs> Wait, I would have to apologize if I tried French. <laughs> so we all had the opportunity to, we were supposed to take a language, right? In high school. And my language that I chose was Latin. <laughs> That's great, Lori. Um, my language was Latin because I thought, well, that will help me in life, right? It's the root of words. It that didn't help a bit, not a bit. But it was fun. Learning a language, a different language is always fun. But all the knowledge is gone because if you don't speak it with someone, you lose it. Oh, Alberta? Holy cow. Canada's taken over. Love it. So I guess I don't know in Canada. Are you are you guys still in lockdown like we are? I guess we're not on lockdown. We're starting to open back up here in Ohio. 
slowly. So I don't know what your status is in Canada. Are you masking? Are you, are you going out to eat? Are you still staying home? You have to let me know. Just opening. It's exciting. It's a little, it's a little nervous. Makes me a little nervous, but it is exciting. Okay. So again, my umbrella looks a little, a little funny because I have my oops lines down here. Again, I'm not worried about it because I know I can cover it with white. So I'm done with, um, I'm done with my medium brush right now. I'll give you another couple minutes and then we're gonna head into the background. So in the, while I'm waiting, while I'm waiting this two minutes, I wanna look at the edges of my umbrella and see if I have any place that has a fat roll of paint, a fat roll that might take a while to dry. So I'm gonna just run my finger here along the edge and make sure I don't have any fat rolls of paint that I might drag my sky through. Smooth them out so they dry a little faster. You could use a paper towel if you don't want to use your finger, but I'm a, I'm a fan of using, uh, using my digits. There we go. All right, let's see. Wait another couple minutes here. Our next step is that sky, okay? So we wanna make sure the edges of our umbrella are dry. So how about, how about we give it five minutes? Let's give it five minutes because we wanna make sure that we don't drag through. If we do, your sky will just turn a little purple, that's all. But that's not really the look I'm going for in this one. I'm gonna use um, blue, white, a little black, a little green maybe in the sky. I'm not gonna go purple, so I don't wanna drag through any wet red. So let's give it till 7.35, let's give it five minutes. So bets in the US, I think you win, honey. Englewood, Florida, you win. There are no prizes, by the way. Just my admiration that you guys are joining me in central Ohio from way far away. Mm. You're three people, Bets. Hello, Bets friends. I miss you, Bets. I wish life would settle down a little bit so we could do um, so we could do lessons again. Sweet bets. Yeah, if life would settle down a little bit, um, I'm supposed to work. So for those of you that don't know, my day job is in. I need I need some private time too, bets. For those of you that don't know, my day job I work at um, in public health. Super exciting time to work in public health during a pandemic, but we've all like doubled our hours and that's not an exaggeration. We're all working round the clock right now, trying to get everyone vaccinated. It went from testing. Now we're trying to get everyone vaccinated and it's incredibly rewarding. It's a great job, but it has sucked away all my, all my spare time. I didn't have spare time by the way, because full-time job. And then I thought, let's open an art studio. So I don't have spare time, but what little bit of time I had, it took it. So hopefully we can get on the far end of the pandemic and the far end of vaccinating and get in some kind of routine and then be able to get my hours back to normal. And then bets, then that's another reason that I'm pushing to March to open or March, May to open the studio. Hoping public health will settle in a little bit by then. We'll see. Hey, Lynn, thanks for joining us, honey. I'm glad to see you.
Oh, there's my girl Buttery. There she is. Sup, Buttery girl. <laughs> If you know me long enough, I, I give you nicknames. It happens. Poor Buttery got stuck with Buttery. <laughs> oh. Okay, so we're waiting two more minutes. Again, let's, let's check. You can do it with your finger or with a paper towel. That's awesome, Lynn, thank you. So I'm checking the edges of my umbrella just to make sure I don't have any rolls of paint that are gonna take a long time to dry because we're gonna work on that sky next. And I don't wanna drag that umbrella color into my sky. I am going to continue to Zoom. I just saw that question come across. I am going to continue to Zoom. It'll maybe shift to Friday nights. Um, I'm not sure yet. I need, need to do some polling and see when people want to do classes at the studio, public classes at the studio. It was Fridays before, but whenever the public classes turn out to be, then I'll do Zooms also. So I'm thinking Friday night, Saturday morning, but yes, it will continue. Oh, if you can't get vaccinated. So that's where herd immunity comes in, right? So if you're if you're in the in the position where you like medically can't get vaccinated, um, fingers crossed, we'll have enough people around that are vaccinated that will kick this thing in the butt. Okay, it's 7.35. Here we go. Let's work on that background. So let's start above the umbrella first. If you get into your umbrella a little bit, that's okay. But most of our brush strokes, we want to go up and down. If you get into the umbrella a little bit, don't worry. Um, First and foremost, you want to make sure that you're not grabbing any wet umbrella paint, right? And then we know that we're going to put a second coat on our umbrella. So we'll be able to camouflage if you come into the umbrella too far, we'll camouflage it with that second coat of paint. So all of our brush strokes up and down. Find your biggest brush. And again, first time we've used this guy. So we're going to tap, tap, tap in the bottom of the cup. Tap, tap, tap. And for this background sky, we're going to use a lot of white. And every now and then, we're going to grab a little blue, tiny bit, tiny bit of blue, maybe a tiny bit of black, and maybe a tiny bit of green. Let me show you. So clean, clean, big brush. Big old swipe of white right there in the edge. I'm going to load that brush up. And then right here in the edge of the blue, I'm going to take a little, a little shoop, just a little swipe. And I'm going to do some nice, ooh, vertical brush strokes. Get right down to my umbrella. I think I might even outline it a little here just to help me out a little bit. There we go. Now, acrylic paint blends while it's wet. So I can take, again, always in the edge, another big chunk of white. And what if this time I take, oh, just a tiny bit of black? That'll make my sky a little gloomier. And what about a tiny bit of green? Just tiny, tiny bit of green. What if I blend those in? Oh, that's cool. Oh, edges, if you're gonna paint your edges, now's the time. Remember, it's easier to paint them now than it is to go back and try to match them up later. Vertical brush strokes. And you can decide, do you like the black in there? I use just the tiniest bit. If you don't like the black in there, don't do it again. 
right? So again, our colors white, blue, every now and then tiny green and maybe tiny black. Vertical brush strokes. And we want our colors to change a little. We want it to be a little more gray, a little more blue, a little, right? It's not supposed to be all one solid color. And you see how I'm getting up there on that tippy top? Again, easier to do it now than it is to try to match it up later. Keep those brush strokes nice and vertical. Finding it easier if I just outline that umbrella. There we go. Oop. Got into my umbrella. Not gonna, not gonna fret about it. getting as close to that umbrella as I can. I don't know how I feel about that black in there. I'm really liking a lot of white, little blue, little green. I'm really liking that color combination. And again, let it be streaky. Don't, don't feel like you need to beat it all into one color, one, one monotone color. Let it be white streaky, dark streaky, let it play. And edges. Oh, that's fun. I'm taking just a tiny bit of white and pulling back straight down with a little bit of white with my dirty brush. Getting some white marks in there, some white streaks. Oh, that's fun. Oh, that bugs me where I got in my umbrella. But again, I'm not gonna worry about it. Remember, you have a whole arsenal of brushes, right? If you need to use a smaller brush to get in closer to your umbrella, you can do that. I'm not too concerned about it because I know when I put that second umbrella coat on there, I'll be able to camouflage a lot, okay? All right. Go ahead and come over here and get this side. So I'll give you another couple minutes here and then we're gonna move on to the bottom. So I'm not rinsing my brush out because I'm just gonna load it up with all those same colors again. 
And I'm gonna get ready here in a minute and move on to the bottom. But as I do this, I'm starting to map out what the rest of this painting is gonna look like, right? I'm gonna have, I'm gonna have my pole that comes down, I don't know, probably about here. I'm gonna have all my flower pots down around in this area. So as long as my pole is gonna be at the bottom of my pole, that's where my ground is gonna start. So everything, I think we're gonna do everything vertical and then I'll show you how to put the ground in. Okay, let's go ahead and do that. Same colors, same, same color scheme, right? You want it to match the top. So white, blue, a little bit of green, whatever colors you have chosen, let's do the same thing down here. And I think I'm gonna go get my line here under my umbrella to start. Now, now vertical brush strokes all the way to the bottom. You should have probably pointed this out earlier, but my best guidance to you is as we do this, don't be afraid to use paint. Use a lot of paint. I literally scoop paint on my canvas. And then once it's on there, I can move it around. Yes, that is my cozy fire burning in the background. So um, thank you. Thank you, Andrea. Yes, my, my cozy fire. So um, for those of you that have not joined us before, I live in a tiny home that we can heat quite easily with a gas fireplace. So that would be my, my heat source for the winter time down there that you see in the background. So we're gonna keep going on this background and it's gonna seem like I'm, I'm starting to move a little faster, which I am and I'm doing that for a reason. So let's get that background color on there. Vertical brush strokes. Because then I wanna show you how we're gonna put the ground in. And we need to put the ground in while the, while the bottom half of the painting is still wet. And remember, don't, don't beat it into one color, right? Be okay with those streaks. That's what helps it look like a, a rainy sky those vertical streaks of color. Getting up as close to that umbrella as you can. I have run out of white, so I'm gonna have to get some more white here real quick. But keep going, finish that, finish that bottom half out.
Okay, so we talk about painting edges. I would I would want to paint the bottom too, but I can do that after this next step. Okay. Okay, so even if you're not ready, I'm going to have you watch me for a second. I want to show you how we're going to put the ground on. So I'm going to split the difference between the bottom of my umbrella and the bottom of the canvas. And that's about where my ground is going to go. And the thing that's going to make it look like ground is side to side. And I know, I know a lot of you aren't done. That's okay. Stay with me here. I'll give you time to finish, but I want to show you what I'm going to do. And I need to do this while it's wet. So I'm going to take my brush, big brush, clean it out. Dry it off. And while this is wet down here, we're going to help it look like water. And by doing that, I'm going to take a clean, my clean, dry, big brush. And we're going to, like Bob would say, two hairs and some air, right? We are not hardly going to touch the canvas at all with this. We are going to lightly, like we're tickling it. Right? We are lightly gonna drag this side to side from halfway down and below. I don't wanna smear all my paint side this way. I do kind of wanna smear it, but I don't wanna get rid of all those vertical lines, but I need to take some and make them sideways. So even if you're not ready, watch me for just a second and then I'll give you another 10 minutes, okay? So while this is wet, clean, dry, big brush, find halfway and from there down is my ground. Again, two hairs and some air. I'm not hardly gonna touch my canvas at all, but I wanna drag it side to side. I wanna get close so you can see what I'm talking about. Look at that, side to side, very lightly, very gently. I'm not hardly touching that canvas at all. And I'm not really picking up any paint on my brush. I guess I have a little in there, wipe that off, right? I'm keeping my, it is cool, isn't it, Andrea? I'm keeping, my brush is pretty dry at this point, very lightly. Like if I'm not careful, I will drop this brush because I don't really have a handle on it because I don't wanna go and get really aggressive. I just wanna lightly drag side to side. And then I have to stop because if I do too much, I'll, I'll lose all that cool, those cool vertical brush strokes. But now you can see it looks a little watery down there. And now if you want, you can paint the bottom edge of your canvas because we're going to go side to side. So how about um, you can keep working on that till oh, about 10 minutes, till about eight o'clock. And then you can let me know if you're ready or you're not. And we'll go from there, okay? Oh, fun. Oh no, Andrea, we use propane too. I just saw your comment. No, no, it's it's propane. Not a gas burner because I'm not home or not a uh, not a wood burner because I'm not home enough for a wood burner. I can't uh I can't keep a keep a wood fire going. <laughs> Is he fibbing to you like a kid? 
did David feed him? And he's like, dad didn't feed me. Oh, silly boy. Oh, I'm really liking how <laughs> they do that. I'm liking how this is looking. It's fun. Get my inspiration painting back up here. So about seven, <laughs> about seven minutes or so. And then I'll check in and see if you need another five. But this painting has a lot to it. So we gotta, we gotta keep moving. Again, if you feel like you're not getting it, it's not turning out the way you want it to, take a break, take a breather. I'm recording it. You can come back to the recording later. <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> oh. Poor Flash, he gets no love. <laughs> I need to see that. Oh, sweet Flash. I don't know, we got, uh, we got Gertrude off routine for a while. And then like randomly, when I was home at two o'clock in the afternoon, working from home, she'd start barking at me. And I'm like, you eat at eight o'clock at night. Why are you barking at me at two in the afternoon? Because we got her off schedule. I think we got her back on schedule though, because she's snoring behind me. She's sleeping. Oh, you had a Gertrude. Yeah, my, uh, she's, she's most of the time pretty Gert. A lot of the time she's dirty Gert. Oh, wait, here's, there's my Gertrude. I carry my Gertrude with me. She's one of those dogs that when I met her, we didn't get her until she was four years old. But when I met her, oh, she had my heart. She's my Trudy. Okay, so about another five minutes. If that bottom hasn't turned out the way you think it should. Oh, Emily, sweet Gert. I'm glad you got her and gave her a good home. Um, if that bottom's not turning out the way you think it should, try to put the vertical strokes back in dry that brush off, clean it out and dry it off really well. And again, light, as light as you can, lightly, lightly drag side to side, very light. You can't press too hard or you just blend it all into one color. You gotta just lightly, lightly tickle the canvas. Let's see, we have four minutes. Oh my gosh. So I like to tell stories. Um, and those of you that haven't been with us before, if you can mute me at any time. Know that at eight o'clock, we'll get to going again. I'll check in with you at eight o'clock and see if you need another five minutes. Um, and majority rules on that. If there's only one person wildly flailing, we'll move on, sorry. It's nothing personal. But if several of you are flailing, then we'll give it another five minutes. Anyway, okay, chickens. So we have chickens. I adore my chickens. I adore my chickens almost as much as I adore my bulldog. We have some of the quirkiest, silliest chickens on the planet. I love them. We have uh, one named Phyllis. She's a Buff Lace Orpington. No, no, not an Orpington, a Buff Lace Polish. I have an Orpington, but we have a Buff Lace Polish. She has this big crown of feathers that is so ginormous, she can't see. Like they come down and cover her eyes. She looks like she should be in some kind of rock band or something, I'm not sure. I just sound like a really old lady that was not attractive, sorry. Some kind of rock band, you know, like the kids listen to. Anyway, so my Phyllis, I adore her, but she's the most 
oh no, Beth, tiny house. It's, well, it's not technically a tiny house because it's over 400 square foot. It's about 440 square foot, I think. So not technically a tiny house because a tiny house has to be under, under 400 square foot. But imagine a two stall garage. That's the size of our house. Um, thanks for asking. Um, so Phyllis, for whatever reason, oh no, no worries. It kind of helps my ADHD. I just, I'll start to tell a story and then go off in another direction. I'll circle back around eventually. Chickens are the weirdest things on the planet. We have 25 hens that, that lay, they're laying hens. They're not meat birds. We have 25 hens and two roosters. They're a whole other story, our two roosters. But we have boxes for them. For those of you that don't know about chickens, they go in the coop and they go in their, in their laying boxes and that's where they leave. <laughs> and that's where they leave their eggs, right? So we did all this math trying to figure out how many boxes we needed for the number of hens that we had. Didn't seem to matter because they all go in one box. All go in at the end of the day to collect eggs and have seven eggs in one box. So I got video of them today. If, if you're bored, look up Georgie and the Hen House Cluckers on Facebook. I posted video. There were three chickens in a box at the same time. I don't know how they got in there. I don't know how they got out safely, but they were in the, it's like the size of a kitty litter bucket. Three of them in there. Just shake my head. There are seven other perfectly fine boxes weirdos but I love them <laughs> they're my little weirdos okay it's eight o'clock if you're not ready if you need five minutes flail wildly oh Tiffany <laughs> sorry no more flailing with Tiffany no other flailers all right sorry Tiffany we're moving on <laughs> Tiffany's gonna be like I'm never joining you guys again it's not fair sorry honey okay so let's think I say let's go back up to the umbrella let's give that dude another coat now with the second coat we're gonna put the coat the second coat on first and then we're gonna do a little bit of shading while that second coat is wet, okay? You know what, Tiffany, you get five more minutes because I noticed I have a lot of wet paint here that I'm afraid I'm gonna drag through. So how about four minutes? 8.05, we'll move on. <laughs> okay, 8.05. So you have four minutes if you need to go potty, if you need to go get a beverage, if you need to grab a snack, 8.05, so you have four minutes. Oh, who's having cream puffs? I don't know, I see cream puffs. Who's? You guys, the ADHD is strong tonight. I just saw cream puffs and I'm like, what? All right, who's the cream puff teas? Where are they? Hmm, cream puffs. That sounds good. Hmm. Okay, so we're gonna talk about food here for just a second. We have two minutes before we move on. So 
a friend made, um, I give her eggs all the time from, from the girls. And then she makes me things. She makes the best quiche on the planet. Um, and she puts in it things that I like that you can't normally buy at the, at the store, or at a restaurant. So she makes me quiche with like loaded with onions and mushrooms, like way more onions and mushrooms than any human being would ever want in a quiche. She puts them all in there for me with my girl's eggs. So anyway, she made, she changed it up from quiche and she made me muffins. They are the yummiest little spice muffins, but she put some kind of a fruit in them and I can't tell what it is. Might be a date, I'm not sure but they're cut up. And when you look at these muffins, they look like olives. I can't get past that. I feel like I'm eating olives in a muffin. And while I am an adventurous eater, green olives in a spice muffin, it's not a, it's not a good, not a good combo. They're not olives. I just haven't asked her yet what kind of fruit it is. Anybody have any ideas? It's not cherries. It looks like it could be a half a cherry, right? It's very round, very hollow in the middle. Any thoughts? One minute before we move on. If anybody has any thoughts on my mystery, mystery fruit in my muffins. And then I'll have to ask her what it is and fill you in next week. I'm gonna add a city background. Oh, if you're gonna add a city background, background now would be the time see kim i don't know if it's apples because they're little i guess it would be the way she cut the apples they literally look like olives like she's cut olives in half so weird i'll ask her and i'll fill you in next week so if you're gonna do a city background in this painting um now would be the time and the way we did that last week we took or when we did that painting, it wasn't last week, it was in February. The way we did that painting, we took a palette knife. And if you don't have a palette knife, you can use a credit card, uh, old credit card, old driver's license. You would get a little bit of paint, a little roll of paint on there and set it, set it down. If your skyline is back in here, set it down and drag down and let go. And a different height, drag down and let go. So you would have these different height squares. But it is 8.06, let's move on. Let's put the second coat on our umbrella. So I'm still gonna use my medium brush, clean it out, dry it off, plain color. So my umbrella's red, I'm gonna give it another coat of red. And then once I get this coat of red on here, I'll show you how we're gonna do some shading. So I'm outlining it like we did before and then filling it in. Remember, follow those same brush strokes as before. Everything goes up to the middle, to the top middle. All your brush strokes lead up that way. Okay. Okay, now, now I'm almost there. 
my umbrella's almost filled in. Now this next part you can do with the, with the medium brush, skinny ways, using it skinny ways, or you can use your pointy brush if you want. But we wanna do this while the red umbrella is wet. And I can see through that red through to a couple of my oopses. I'm not worried about it because I know I'm gonna put white there and white is the magic camouflage of all things. But not yet. So I have red on my brush. I'm gonna take the tiniest, tiniest bit of black, tiny. And I'm gonna go back over my spines in my umbrella. So red and the tiny, tiny, tiniest bit of black. Too much and it looks like you're painting stripes on your umbrella. Look, you can't even hardly see the black on there. I might add more, but this might be enough. Here. And with red on my brush, it's hard to see, but I red and that tiny bit of black and I'm blending it right in there. Do you see it? It's so hard to see because it's so subtle. Let's do that again. Ooh, ooh, too aggressive, too much. But because that red is wet, go right back over it and soften it. Soften it. We're just trying to get those shadow lines in there. Okay. Red. Red on your brush. Make sure you got red on your brush. Tiny bit of black. Tiny, tiny bit. Using that brush skinny ways. Okay, I'm not using it fat ways. I'm using it skinny ways. And I'm putting those spines back in. So think about where you want your shading on your umbrella. I feel like I would have a little shading there on my spines. Where else might I have shading? I might have shading about a fat finger up from the bottom on all of these, all of these whoopy hang downs. So maybe here. And here. Again, it's very subtle, but it's gonna help with the overall look here later. Oh, too much. Too much when that happens, wipe it off. Grab a little red, back over it and soften it. Okay. Another, another minute or so here, get that shading on. Okay. Oh, I'm liking it. So now anywhere you have shadow, you have to have highlight, right? The way the, that we really make the shadow work is by adding little bits of highlight. Now I'm not gonna do a lot 
right now. I'll come back later because whatever white I put on there right now to highlight is gonna turn my entire area pink. Not what I want. A little bit is okay though. Okay, I'm gonna take my medium brush and clean it out. And I wanna lay the tiniest bit of white right here along the top down each one of these sections. And then I'm gonna come back later and put white, white, um, white, white highlight lines. So for now, just a little bit. So clean, clean medium brush, tiny bit of white, just the tiniest bit on there. Because whatever I do is gonna turn pink. So I'm gonna start here at the top and I'm gonna pull down and let go. I have so little paint on there, we're almost dry brushing it. See how way just like ran out down there. Do that again here. Down and let go. Down and let go. Down and let go. I'm skipping over the spines. I'm doing the section in between the spines that would be standing out a little bit. Okay. Down and let go. getting right up next to those spines. So not painting on them, but I'm getting right up close to them. And I'm pulling down, about halfway down my umbrella. Now I'm gonna come back with my small brush later with some white, but I want my umbrella to be dry before I do that. Because if I keep trying to put white on it now, it's just gonna turn, turn pink. So we gotta stop touching it at some point and leave it, leave it dry. Okay. okay, I'm gonna move on to my small brush and I wanna put my, um, my umbrella pole. I couldn't think of my word, my umbrella pole. So I think I'm gonna use blue with a little bit of black. I feel like black might be too much by itself. So with my pointy brush, I'm gonna use some blue, a little bit of black. And this pole is in the middle. Right, so I need to give a little, a little nubbin up top. Zoop, little nubbin. And then straight down from here, down to where we started to do the side to side brush strokes because it's gonna disappear behind those flowers. Okay, little brush blue, little bit of black. I have to stand in front to get a straight line, sorry. There we go, a little bit thicker. It's an awfully skinny pole to support that umbrella. A little heavier. So again, blue with a tiny bit of black. I'll give it a highlight later when I give the rest of my umbrella highlight, but I gotta get that dark pole on there first. Okay, a little heavier. Remember if at any point you feel I'm starting to move too fast, I know there's a lot to this painting, 
um, just take a take a breath and wait and come back to the video because the video you can pause and rewatch if you need to move at your own pace. Where tonight for the interest of keeping this painting within two hours, I'm gonna start to move a little faster, okay? So now I'm gonna move on down here in the bottom and I'm gonna put some pots in next, okay? And that's where that brown is gonna come in. So somebody asked the question earlier, what if I don't have brown? Well, if you don't have brown, mix a little bit of blue into your orange. That should give you a brown. Red and green, they're opposites on the color wheel. That will also give you brown. But I want a riot of color down here, right? I want those flowers to be bunched together. So those, those bunches are gonna come right next to other bunches. So we're not gonna see a lot of the pots but I do have to put a couple in there to have something for my flowers to sit in, right? So I'm gonna use some brown, medium brush brown, and a tiny, 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 tiny bit of black because the brown by itself is not powerful enough. So I have to use a tiny bit of black and I'm gonna put one, two, three, four, five, five different pots down there. It's gonna be about two fingers wide. So I'm gonna have one here, on like a little, little V, little round bottom, little round top. Not gonna to put a lot of effort into them because in the end, you're not even really gonna see them. My goal is to have them covered, covered with flowers. So there's one, see brown, a little bit of black, maybe even get a little orange, who knows? Maybe one over here, again, V, round bottom, round top. Oh, that needs to be bigger. Cute. So I'm not spending a lot of time on them at all. I can add more to them later, but I really just want to get them on there so I know where I can start to set my flowers. What did I say, five? So there's one, two, three. Maybe one here. And maybe one more right over here. Now, as we start to work on our flowers down here in the bottom, what we have to remember is it's a rainy day, right? So whatever we have happening in, in 3D is also gonna happen in 2D. That was a weird way to say that. Let me try that again. Whatever is happening in, in real life here is gonna be reflected down on the ground flat. So, I have a little bit of popped color still on my brush. I have the crookedest looking pots on the planet. It's okay. I have a little bit of that color left. So now I know that color is gonna be shown down in, in the water, in the wet pavement. Everything you do in the pavement, like we did those brush strokes side to side, Everything you do down there has to be side to side, has to be parallel to the bottom. So I have the tiniest bit of brown on my brush. So underneath each one of these pots, 
I'm gonna give a really light dry brush side to side. Right up underneath it, side to side. We're gonna do this with our flowers, with our leaves, little broken side to side brush strokes. Okay, and get right up to the bottom of the pot. You don't want light between the reflection and the pot because then it looks like your pot's floating. Okay, the time has come. I'm super excited about this. Time for flowers. Okay, so I'm gonna do flowers first and then fill in with greenery wherever I feel I need to. And I'm gonna do one color at a time. So how about yellow is my first? I use yellow as my first color. So I'm gonna do all my yellow sections first. So I'm gonna have a big bunch of yellow flowers here, a little bit over here, some maybe down in here, right? Every color where you put flowers down here, you have to add a little bit of white. Remember all of our paint, if you're using um, Blick student grade acrylic paint, all of our paint is very transparent, okay? So you have to add either black or white to make it more solid. I'm, gonna, I'm not gonna use black because that'll just make my, my colors dark and gloomy and it's not what I want. I'm gonna use white. So this is where our Q-tips come in. Now you can use a brush and do little, little dab, dab, dabs if you want with your brush. You can take a paper towel and roll it up to get like a little stamper with it but I'm gonna try Q-tips. I'm just holding them in a bundle. I'm gonna get messy. Okay, some white and some yellow. And, oh yeah, uh-huh, 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 uh-huh. Guys, look, look what's happening. Now I'm gonna stay away from my pot because I don't wanna get into that brown, right? So don't pick up brown from your wet pot, but make sure those flowers over, they overflow your pot, right? Because we want this to all be full of all kinds of gorgeous colors. I'm gonna come back in with some greenery to fix this if they don't, if I have gaps, if they don't touch the pot like I feel they should. Okay, let's see, I love that. I'm gonna do another little yellow section over here that's not even coming out of a pot. It's, it's in a pot that you can't see. Just kind of floating over there. And what if, ooh, I feel like I need, I need a little bit over here. I'll connect that to something later. It's not connected to anything right now, but I'll connect it. Okay, yellow, white. I feel like I want some down in here. Oh, oh, oh I love the Q-tips. Yes. Let's see. Ooh, color wheel lesson. Yellow first. Then where do we go from yellow? We can go into orange with these same dirty yellow Q-tips. There'll come a point that we'll have to move on to clean Q-tips, but from yellow, I can go into orange. So I'm gonna go white, orange, and oh, I'm gonna blend some, oh, yes. Blend some orange right in there. This is just like anything else. Don't feel like you have to 
excuse me, don't feel like you have to work it and work it and work it and blend it into oblivion, right? Let there be different dots of color. Let that happen. Oh, that's pretty. Okay, now, remember what we said about the pots. Anytime we have color above, we got to have a reflection below. Just like we did the pots, medium brush, clean it out, dry it off. If I have yellow up here, yellow and white. I got to have a little bit of yellow and white down here reflected. I'm not going to do that with my Q-tips. I'm going to do that with my, with my brush. Tiny, tiny bit of paint. Not even hardly paint on there at all. Side to side. Oh, there we go. A little yellow reflection down there. Oh, I'm going to need a little, little yellow reflection down here. I'm going to need a little, I think a little yellow reflection right down in there. I hope I have orange here. I need to get some orange down there. Orange, a little bit of white. Remember as you do this, it's okay to be messy. The biggest thing to remember is what happens up here has to happen down here too. Messy is good. Okay. So let's see, I have my orange. Oh, I think I can go into red next and use these same dirty Q-tips. Oh, red. Oh yeah, uh-huh. Red and I've got a little bit of that orange, orange yellow showing through. That's pretty. Remember, let them overhang the pots. We want a riot of color down here. Every now and then grab some white. Get little bits of white in there. Oh, come on. Okay. So what colors do I have on my Q-tips right now? I have yellow, orange, and red. I want to get some purple and blue in there. I'm going to, if I'm going to use, if I'm going to put purple and blue flowers in there, I'm going to have to use clean Q-tips because opposites on the color wheel make mud, right? So I have yellow in here. If I want purple flowers, I can't have the chance of the yellow showing through. So I got to move to clean Q-tips. Um, if I want blue flowers, I need clean Q-tips because I have orange in there, right? I don't want the orange coming out while I'm using blue because I don't want to make mud. So let's see, I think I'm going to start with, let's start with blue. What the heck? Blue, a little bit of white. I want some blue. Oh, yes. Uh-huh. Oh my goodness, I forgot my red reflection down there. I'll do that in a second. Let's see. I think I want, I, like I want a little more blue. Maybe up here. That's pretty. I, I got to balance it out. Uh 
Okay. Reminding myself what happens above has to happen below. See, I have orange, I have yellow. I need a little tiny, tiny bit of red. Red, little white, little orange. So remember, I as you do this, my goal is to just show you some different, different techniques and have you play a little bit. You can continue to play as long as you want because you're in your own house, right? Let's see, blue, 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 the white. Oh, and now some purple. Let's see, purple, blue, red, white. Okay. Look at that tons, tons of color down there. Keep going, keep playing, get all the colors in there. I need to get a little purple reflection down here. Straight down below where my purple flowers are. And then I think when this dries a little bit, I'll put a little bit of white down in there in the bottom, but I don't want to smear all my colors I have down there. Let's talk greenery. Medium brush. I love the lime green that's in the original painting. So watch how I'm going to put greenery on. Green, yellow, Little bit of white. And I want some greenery here to connect this, this bunch of flowers to my pot. I'm gonna take this medium brush and set it down sideways and pull up and let go. Greenery. Do that again down here. Setting it down sideways, pulling in and letting go. My bundle of leaves. Now, as you do this, don't get hung up on. Leaves have to be right here, right? That's not what this is about. This is about just a riot of color down there, okay? So I'm gonna take some green, some yellow, we'll swipe a white. Look at all that fabulousness on my brush. All kinds of stuff on there. So I feel like I want a bunch of, bunch of leaves over in here. They're not even really connected to much of anything. You know, up in here. Ooh, down here. Ooh, I feel like I need some down here that's they've fallen on the ground, maybe. Some greenery in there. Ooh, little leaves sticking out ooh, among my blue flowers. Oh, maybe some sticking out here behind my behind my purples. Let me show you that up close. Leaves. I'm loading my brush up with green. And then I'm taking some yellow and then a little swipe of white. Zoop. 
I'm not blending it, right? I have all those fabulous colors. Then I'm gonna lay my brush down, find a clean spot here, lay it down skinny ways, set it down and pull. Look at that little leaf, set it down and pull. Set it down and pull. That helps me create easy little leaves. And as you put your leaves on there, use different combinations of green, yellow, white. I feel like this time I might just add a little bit of white. Gives me some lovely little highlights. I feel like this is something you could go back and watch the video later and pick up practice and pick up a lot of different a lot of different leaf knowledge. I know I'm moving kind of quickly through this, but it's something you could really play with if you if you spent the time. Let's see, I get some green reflected down here. Being really careful not to make mud. Oh, purple, red and blue, and a tiny bit of white. Oh, um, so uploading to Facebook or uploading to YouTube, uploading the videos. I have a couple from last month uploaded. I need to upload a couple more. Um, it's just whenever the internet decides to cooperate. No problem, Emily. Okay. I feel like I want to play a little bit with those with those pots. My pots are too boring. I'm gonna take a little bit of little orange, maybe a little white. Just a couple little lines on my pots. Well, that makes my pots a little more interesting. And then I think what I might do, I might let that dry a little bit and then go back in and play some more. I feel like, like if I get too much in there right now, it'll all start to blend together and I'll get mud because I've got a lot of thick colors happening. But I would love, for example, this orange one here in front to get a little more defined orangey red and this purple one to get some deeper colors in there but I'm a little afraid to do that right now because it's all still very wet. So I'm gonna leave that alone for a moment. Let me go back to my umbrella. So back to my umbrella, I'm gonna take my pointy brush with a little bit of white. And now I'm going to get those white highlights on there. Now that my umbrella is dry, I'm going to get a nice white line right here along this top. A nice white line along here. It's like where that rain is hitting. Nice little white outline there on my my little nubbin on top of my umbrella. White down here, not on my spine, but just to the side of my spines. It's like that rain is running down my umbrella. Think about where that rain is gonna hit your umbrella heaviest. And I hit it heaviest on this top. Okay. And I feel like right above these dark seams, I have little white highlights there.
I'm going right above those dark seams, right above them. And then a little bit of white, I'm gonna outline the bottom of my umbrella. Cleans it up a little bit. Oh, that's fun. Highlight your, um, your umbrella pole. So I think I'm gonna come down the left side of this pole with a little bit of white. Give it a little highlight, make it a little more interesting. Okay. Trying to decide if this is dry enough down here to get some, some white side to sides down there. Might not be dry enough yet. <gasps> you know what I wanna do? I wanna put raindrops in. Watch this. So where's the raindrops, right? They're gonna be above the umbrella. Not necessarily, well, I guess you could have some below, not as many though, but you could have some below the umbrella because they would be beyond the umbrella, right? but I'm gonna concentrate most of them above the umbrella. I'm gonna take my medium brush and use the other end of it with white. And I'm gonna set it down and drag it up. Raindrop. White, white paint on there. I'm gonna set it down. Let me go sideways here. Set it down, drag it straight up. I think that's a fun way to get raindrops on there. Down, drag it up. I don't know if you can hear it, but it sounds like I'm scratching my canvas. And I get fresh paint on my brush every time. Oh, that's fun. Oh, like that. Yeah, I think I want to. I want a couple raindrops down here. Make them a little smaller because they're going to be beyond the umbrella. So I don't want them as pronounced as my my big fat guys up here. Oh, fun, 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 fun. Okay. Let's see, I think one of the last things I wanna do here and last for the recording, right? But I really think I'm gonna go in and play a little more. So it's not the last thing I'm gonna do to this painting, but I, for the recording, I want a little bit of white on that medium brush. And when I feel this reflection down here is pretty dry, I wanna come and put some white, some little white shushes to make it look like the light is hitting that ground. So just a little bit of white paint side to side, very random. I 
can't wait to see what you guys have done with this painting. This is a lot of fun. It's a good one tonight. This is just what I needed. I think I say that every week, don't I? It's true though. Painting, uh, painting really helps my mental health. So I'm so glad that you guys are here to paint with me tonight. Okay. Oh, that's fun. Really want to get back in those, uh, those flowers and play. Orange, white. Now that my pots are dry, I can have them overhang my pots a little bit. <laughs> so Andrea, are we reading each other's minds? Because that's what I just did. Some dripping off my umbrella. I think I should do a little more dripping off my umbrella. Let's see. So these, my drips end up being about a quarter inch. So let's. <laughs> there we go. Oh, fun. Couple extra drips there at the edge. Right, Andrea? So it looks like it's dripping off the, the edges of my umbrella. Oh, that's fun. Okay, so I think with that, I think I might be done. So I'm gonna encourage you to keep playing, keep having fun, right? I'm going to let this, I'm not going to sign my painting because I don't think I'm done with it yet. I kind of want to get in there and add another layer of color in some of those flowers. I want to add like some deeper red and maybe some nice pink highlights on this one. Maybe some nice lavender highlights here. Get a little brighter orange here. I could get in there and really play and have a lot of fun with that. So I'm not gonna sign it. I don't sign my paintings until I'm done with them because then once I sign them, it's, a, it's done. I won't touch it anymore. So um, for the sake of tonight though, we'll call this done. Um, when you are finished with your painting, don't forget to sign. We usually sign bottom left or bottom right. You can sign on the back if you want, but if you do sign on the back, never ever here, always out here. You don't want to sign with a paint pen or a Sharpie here because it'll bleed through to the front over time. Okay. Oh, that was a lot of fun. So I would love if you would uh, take a picture of yourself with your painting, selfie it with your painting, and then send that picture to me to Crookedore Studio on Facebook, or you can email me. I'll put my email in the Zoom comments real quick. But I'm going to go ahead and stop the recording and then I'll give you the opportunity to unmute yourself if we want to chat for a little bit. So for the recording, thank you so much. This is Shauna Sue from Crooked Door Studio. Um, thank you so much for joining me tonight. This has been a lot of fun. I'll see you guys next week.